Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at that ongoing major snowstorm, and then we're also going to be taking a look at an upcoming severe weather or tornado outbreak this week. For today's comment of the day, I want to know which categorical outlook do you think we will end up with on Wednesday? Do you think we will stay with an enhanced risk? Do you think we'll go up to a moderate or even a high? I don't think so, but let me know if you do. And I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now let's get straight into this video. And first things first, we're taking a look at that radar for the entire United States. There's two big weather systems going on. First off, we have that snowstorm and rainstorm going on for California over there that you can see. And then we also have that one up there for the upper Midwest. That was our Rockies major historic snowstorm that has finally moved and pushed up into that upper Midwest. We do have a cold front down there all the way from Missouri. You can see that extends all the way down to Louisiana with some general thunderstorms or heavier showers going on. Let's first off zoom down into California and take a look at that snowstorm real quick. All right, now, as you can see, we have plenty of that snowfall going on up there for those mountainous regions of California. Also, some of those northern regions up there of California. Some of that extends into southern Oregon as well. Very interesting situation with some moderate uh, rainfall going on there for central regions there of California. Some showers along the northern coast, and those are pushing down closer to San Francisco, actually. So we probably are going to see some sprinkles and some showers make their way all the way down there. Uh, even some showers approaching pretty close to Los Angeles down there, as you can see as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at that major snowstorm that is ongoing for the upper Midwest. Now, as we can see, we have plenty of snowfall going on for northern Nebraska. That's generally approaching uh, that border there of South Dakota, the end of that snowfall. So we are going to be closing out things there for Nebraska pretty soon. Same story with uh, western Iowa there as well, where we have some very heavy snowfall close to the mixing. That's very typical. The closer you are to that mixing area, usually the heavier that snowfall is. Sioux Falls is getting tons of snowfall right now. Uh, even Minneapolis, where we saw some rain showers kind of approaching, but it's cooling down. As you can see, we're seeing more areas switch over to snowfall. Even uh, Austin, Minnesota down there as well is seeing some pretty heavy snowfall at this point. We're also seeing that rain snow line move further and further east there in Iowa as well. So more and more of these regions are seeing that heavier snowfall throughout the day today. And probably one of our last snowstorms of the year. And it was a very, very big one also. Let's take a look down there at those heavier showers going on for more of the south central United States. Now, as you can see, we do have some of those heavier showers and thunderstorms going on for Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, also areas up through Arkansas. Those are kind of closing out for Arkansas there and approaching more of Mississippi and more of Tennessee there. Uh, we also see portions of Missouri and Illinois seeing some of those heavier showers as well. Obviously, the yellows are heavier. Those are going to be extending eastward throughout the day today. More thunderstorms to the south there. It looks like a line of thunderstorms are developing down there in Louisiana. Let's just zoom in there actually and take a look at that. So as you can see, we have more of those oranges showing up down here, indicating that heavier regions of showers, potentially thunderstorms as well, building in down here for Louisiana. Those are going to be generally moving up in through Mississippi throughout the day today, maybe even Alabama and Tennessee as they extend further north and further east. Now, what we're going to do here in a moment is we're going to go ahead and we're going to finally take a look at some model guidance. We're going to take a look at some of that snowfall that has come down already for that snowstorm uh, for the Rockies. And then we're also going to take a look at what snowfall is yet to come. And then we're going to talk about that potential severe weather outbreak later this week. Now, here we are taking a look at that snowfall that has already come down here for the Rockies and the upper Midwest. And this was updated around last night at about 8 p.m. So there still is a lot that has happened since then. Uh, so we're generally taking a look at the blues at about one to six inches of snow that has fallen. Uh, those kind of pinkish shades in there, that's where we're at about six to 12. As it gets more towards a uh, kind of red burgundy color in there. That's where we're at about 12 to 24. It's the oranges when we get to about 24 plus and those very bright oranges in there that you can see some of that for Wyoming. That's where we're at 36 plus. So we're just seeing feet and feet and feet of snow that has fallen already. Uh, and let's just zoom in here so you can see those numbers on the screen. You see 41 being picked up there for Wyoming, portions of Wyoming. Uh, plenty of 20-inch plus amounts being picked up for Colorado, Wyoming, Nebraska. So yeah, it was a whopper of a snowstorm to say the least. Let's take a look at those current watches and advisories and warnings that are still up here. We see plenty of those winter weather advisories there up there for California, Nevada, 
uh, Oregon there. Some still for Colorado. Then we see Nebraska, South Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa, Illinois, Wisconsin. And then we have winter storm warnings being picked up in those pinks. So yeah, there's still a lot of warnings, watches, and advisories around for this event. We see the, t the snowfall that's still expected to occur here. We see in the blues 2 to 6, the purple 6 to 10. Uh, and then we do see some 10 to 20 inch amounts still around uh, that we're still expecting there for Minnesota and Iowa, especially there. California expected to get about 12 to maybe even 30 inches there from that snowstorm that they're seeing right now as well. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to finally talk about that severe weather. Here we are taking a look at day one. So remember, we have those thunderstorms going on for Louisiana. They're going to move into Mississippi and Alabama. We do have a general thunderstorm risk in that lighter green region, which is going to be pretty widespread throughout that south, central, southeastern United States region, some of the Ohio Valley as well. Uh, and then we have those two marginal risks, one there for mostly Missouri and then one there for Alabama and Mississippi. That shouldn't be too much severe weather going on today. But tomorrow, we do have a slight risk with a very large marginal risk as well for that very large dark green area. That's where we start to see some of this isolated severe weather events occurring. Uh, and then in the yellow, that's where it's going to become a lot more scattered in. We could see more consistent severe weather in there. And I certainly think it's possible that tomorrow we see an enhanced risk as well there for portions of Oklahoma and Kansas. So we're going to be watching for these things very closely. There is a chance I'm going to be going live tomorrow, although it does seem like an overnight event. So I'm just going to leave it as a 50-50 chance. I might go live. I might not. We will have to wait and see. Uh, I want to, but it just depends on what time it is, of course. Now, for the wind outlook here, first off, we have a 5% chance in that green. Within 25 miles of a given location that we will see damaging wind. And then 15% in that yellow. All right. Now, the hail risk that extends a little bit further north is the same percentages, same mile uh, region there. So really it's just a little bit more widespread with that. And then for the day two tornado risk, we have a 2% chance of tornadoes throughout this entire green area within 25 miles of a given location. Uh, so there's obviously room for an enhancement there for the 5%, possibly more uh, as we reach the day tomorrow. It depends on what those short range models look like. It depends on a lot of things. For the model guidance, we're going to be at about 65 degrees or more there for Oklahoma and Texas and Kansas. Uh, the dew points are going to generally be in the lower to mid 60s, so that's going to be sufficient as well. And then that shear out in front of these storms are actually going to be pretty high. Uh, we're picking up pretty maxed out shear there. And then the significant tornado parameter, although we only have a 2% chance, we have a very high rating here on the significant tornado parameter. So we're going to watch very closely and see if we get a 5% or more chance of tornadoes there as the National Weather Service. As we approach closer, they might upgrade that for sure. The Cape is going to be generally over 1,000 within these green regions and over 1,500 in the yellows. This is thunderstorm fuel. We call this convective available potential energy uh, or for short Cape here. Uh, and you, the higher this number, the easier time those storms are going to have developing. For the simulated radar, let's watch it. It's a little more linear, as you can see. They're not really discrete. They're not really isolated in there. But we see just a line of thunderstorms. And usually this means a little bit less tornadic activity, but it's hard to say for certain. And that's going to be by about already like 12 a.m. So again, I think this could be an overnight event. That's why I might not go live. And then as they reach the central regions of Oklahoma by about maybe 3 a.m. here, we can see it's a little more discreet there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. And we're going to reach day three where we have an enhanced risk right now. Could be a moderate or more though. Here's that day three, and as you can see, very large area of general thunderstorm risk there in the lighter green, uh, and then the darker green is that marginal risk, and that's where we start to see that isolated severe weather events occurring. Within the yellow, that's where we start to see the scattered severe weather that's called our slight risk region, and then we have a very large orange region that extends for portions of Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama, as well as a little bit of Tennessee and Florida there. That's called our enhanced risk region. And since it is so large, I think there's a pretty decent chance we do see an upgrade here to a moderate risk for day three at some point. I, I think that's looking likely at this point. Let's take a look at the temperatures that day. And this is the high temperatures. And as you can see, we're going to be in the mid to upper 70s here for portions of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, especially there. Uh, where we're expecting the worst of the severe weather. And then mid to upper 60s as far as dew points, that's going to be very good. And as you can see, it does actually help out the Cape here as we have 2,000 plus amounts expected in the oranges. That's twice the amount that you need for severe weather to develop typically. 
So we have widespread, very good cape here. We have 1,000 plus in the greens, 1,500 plus in the yellows, and then in those oranges as we move up into the 2,000. Uh, and the maximum being picked up here is 2,900. So that's going to actually be a very high cape event here. The sheer is in the is in the higher range there. The browns, the whites, the pinks, that's all very high sheer. So that's not going to be a problem. Here's the simulated radar. It's a little lower resolution here because we're having to switch to a lower resolution model because it's a little bit further out. Tomorrow and the next day, we will have much more information. I am planning on going live on Wednesday as well. So hopefully if everything goes as perfect as possible, I will be able to go live on Tuesday and Wednesday, but at least Wednesday for sure. Uh, so here's some of those thunderstorms developing there for some of the Gulf states, Alabama, Mississippi, ten or sorry, Louisiana. I don't know why I said Tennessee. I guess it's pretty close, though. So that's by about 1 p.m. there on Wednesday. Uh, let's move this on towards about uh, maybe 3 p.m. here. And as you can see, those showers and thunderstorms are developing even further for Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. And these actually develop a lot further as we're reaching about 7 or 6 p.m. here on Wednesday, March 17th. So I'm expecting a pretty long-lived severe weather event here. By the time we're reaching maybe about 10 p.m. here on Wednesday, you can see that those move up into the northern regions of Alabama, especially uh, even Tennessee getting some of that severe weather and probably eventually Georgia as well. Let's take that towards about 4 a.m. here. So overnight, I'm obviously not going to be live at 4 a.m., but we do see plenty of those very strong thunderstorms there for Alabama uh, and Georgia as well. So anyway, for our confidence tab, we're out of five out of six. We feel very good that the severe weather is going to occur. Uh, we feel very strongly that it could be a tornado outbreak as well. Uh, and then that snowstorm is already well on its way ongoing. So there's obviously no question of the confidence with that. So we're out of five out of six. The severe weather could be a little bit worse or a little bit not as bad as we're expecting. Uh, but generally, we're feeling very confident at this point. Anyway, for yesterday's comment of the day, I asked you guys, when do you expect our next moderate risk? And number one said, I think that the next moderate risk will be on day four, which actually happens to be this upcoming Wednesday. So they are referring uh, to that risk that we've been talking about today. Uh, in the middle of the 30% chance in classic Dixie Alley. And that does seem like that is going to be the case, potentially. That's a good comment of the day there. By the way, we're in spring mode, storm mode, basically. Uh, if you've seen the new channel art, let us know what you think. We have our new patron end screen of the day, by the way, as well, with that same uh, lightning storm art that's on our banner. So let us know what you think. I think it's very cool. This is a brand new one, actually. We've never used this one before in all three years of direct weather history. So uh, let us know what you think of our storm mode here. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Property Damage, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Alan Balemo, Adam S., Larry LePan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Cherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Mark J., Luke Vallego, Garys, and John Qualisi. If you'd like to be a part of this patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. Anyway, thank you so much for watching our video. Be sure to like the video. Be sure to subscribe. Absolutely destroy that like button, by the way. It helps the algorithm just suggest this video to more people, which is obviously very helpful. Uh, just getting the word out. So yeah, be sure to smash that like button. Uh, but yeah, if you want more content, be sure to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.